the Forgotten Tragedy, the Los Angeles Chinese Massacre of 1871. The Los Angeles Chinese Massacre of 1871 was a tragic event that unfolded on the night of October 24th of that year. In a shocking display of racial violence, approximately 500 residents of Los Angeles stormed the neighborhood of Calle de los Negros. The catalyst for this violent outburst was the killing of a white man by alleged Chinese gang members. What followed was a few hours of horror, resulting in at least 19 Chinese immigrants dying, constituting 10% of the city's Chinese population. This incident ranks among the deadliest acts of racial violence in American history. Surprisingly, the city chosen for this devastating event was not San Francisco, the epicenter of Chinese American society and anti-Chinese activism, but Los Angeles, a smaller city with a relatively small Chinese population. Join us as we delve into this crucial and often overlooked American history chapter. Brief Explanation of Chinese Immigration to America Chinese immigration to America, particularly California in the 19th century, was driven by factors such as the Qing Dynasty's decline and the allure of the California Gold Rush. Despite seeking economic opportunities, Chinese immigrants faced discrimination and the derogatory stereotype of being coolies, threatening the ideology of white settlers. Anti-Chinese sentiment persisted due to economic concerns and racism, leading to violence and attempts to restrict immigration. Chinese immigrants settled in urban areas, initially working within their Chinatown community and later expanding into the broader economy. They faced economic challenges and tensions with the white working class. Still, evidence suggests their immigration had minimal impact on white wages. Chinese immigrants formed mutual aid organizations to resist discrimination and played a crucial role in constructing the Transcontinental Railroad. However, after its completion, Chinese workers faced high unemployment rates and increased uncertainty. The racist stereotype of Chinese immigrants depicted them as cunning, dishonest, and thieving, with their cultural differences considered heathenish. Chinese settlements were associated with vices like gambling and prostitution, portraying Chinese immigrants as unassimilable and unworthy of citizenship. Chinese men were seen as threats to white women, while Chinese women were assumed to be prostitutes. Los Angeles newspapers labeled the Chinese as brutal, uncivilized barbarians. Despite economic prosperity in Los Angeles, anti-Chinese sentiment focused on associating them with vice and immorality rather than a labor threat. Chinese secret societies engaged in criminal activities primarily within their community, but this association was then used to justify the anti-Chinese lynching with blame shifted away from the mob. The Los Angeles Chinese Massacre of 1871 The Los Angeles Chinese Massacre of 1871 occurred on October 24, 1871. It was triggered by a conflict between two rival Chinese Huiguan leaders over ownership claims to a Chinese prostitute named Yit Ho. Huiguans were mutual aid organizations that played vital roles in California's 19th century Chinese American communities. The leaders of Hong Chao and Ninyong Huiguans, Yo Hing and Sam Yuen, respectively, competed in illicit businesses, including the trafficking of prostitutes. Still, their dispute over Yit Ho escalated into a violent clash. Fighters associated with these Huiguans arrived in Los Angeles from San Francisco, armed and prepared for a turf war. Reports indicate that the rival Huiguans purchased up to 600 firearms before the massacre. On October 24th, members of the Hong Chao Huiguan shot and killed a member of the Ninyong Huiguan, leading to a shootout between the rival groups on Calle de los Negros, the main street of Chinatown. 
During the confrontation, a police officer named Jesus Bilderain, responding to the gunfire, was wounded, along with a bystander named Juan Jose Mendebles. Additionally, a white rancher named Robert Thompson entered the Wing Chun store, owned by Sam Yuen's Ning Young Company, where the Chinese fighters fatally shot him. Following the initial shootings, the police blockaded the area, herding the entire Chinese population into the Coronel building to apprehend the culprits. Meanwhile, news spread that the Chinese had targeted white men, intensifying anger among the crowd, which grew to around 500 people. Amidst the chaos, the gunmen responsible for the earlier shootings managed to escape, leaving the walls of the Coronel building as the only defense for the Chinese immigrants seeking refuge inside. For three agonizing hours, the furious mob relentlessly attacked the adobe structure, with men scaling the roof, hacking through it with axes, and shooting at the Chinese hiding below. During this chaos, a Chinese man armed with a hatchet attempted to escape but was swiftly captured. He was dragged to a nearby gateway and hanged after having a rope tied around his neck in a terrifying display of the first lynching that night. By 9 o'clock, the mob breached the building, setting off a horrifying and systematic massacre, indiscriminately targeting any Chinese individuals in sight. Accounts of the survivors paint a picture of unimaginable racial violence, surpassing any previous measure of cruelty. Eight Chinese men were dragged out, publicly beaten, and hanged using whatever available materials. One man was gruesomely killed by being dragged over stones with a rope around his neck. Three men were hanged on a nearby wagon, and four others were hanged on the gateway of a nearby corral. On Los Angeles Street, six Chinese, including a young boy, were hanged from the awning in front of their homes. Even a doctor named Jean Tong, pleading for his life in both English and Spanish, met an unforgiving end, being mercilessly hanged. His body was later discovered with a missing finger, severed to steal the rings he had worn. In the face of these violent acts, the response from Los Angeles law enforcement was lackluster. Some officers assisted Chinese individuals in escaping, and others tried to prevent the looting of Chinese businesses. However, no arrests were made, and police officers refrained from using their weapons to halt the ongoing hangings. Their efforts proved ineffective in stopping the massacre or preventing the substantial looting of Chinese property, estimated to be worth between $14,000 and $30,000. Those who dared to intervene and prevent further lynchings were met with threats of murder from the crowd. Within four hours, 19 and 22 Chinese men were subjected to lynching, shooting, or stabbing. According to the 1870 census, Los Angeles had at least 179 Chinese residents, indicating that approximately 10% of the city's Chinese population was brutally murdered in a single night. The subsequent legal proceedings did little to address the injustice and trauma inflicted upon the Chinese community. In 1872, eight men were convicted of manslaughter for their involvement in the lynching mob. Still, their sentences were overturned by the California Supreme Court a year later. The massacre's perpetrators were left unpunished in line with the earlier predictions of the Daily Alta California regarding anti-Chinese sentiment. The racially motivated nature of the attack is self-evident. In response to killing a single white man who had intervened in a Chinese criminal dispute, the mob unleashed indiscriminate violence against any Chinese individual they could find. This racially charged motivation was apparent not only in the actions of the murderers themselves, but also in the widespread support and solidarity expressed by onlookers, as documented in contemporary accounts of the events. The initial coverage of the massacre in the Los Angeles Daily Star demonstrates the prevailing racist sentiments of the time. The article, titled The Chinese Outrage, begins by explicitly portraying the crimes of the Chinese community in a derogatory manner rather than acknowledging the mass lynching targeting the Chinese. It emphasizes the supposed threat posed by the brutal, uncivilized barbarians who inhabited the country, suggesting that this incident indicates the consequences that would arise if more Chinese were to migrate to the coast. 
In this publication, one of the city's prominent newspapers at the time, the shooting of a single white man takes precedence over the atrocities committed against the Chinese community. The lynch mob's anger towards their Chinese neighbors had multifaceted origins, and the murder of a white citizen merely catalyzed their relentless onslaught. Whether the Chinese victims were involved in the initial shooting or not was irrelevant, as their race alone determined their guilt in the eyes of the mob. This racial bias permeated the coverage and understanding of the events. Could there be justice for the massacre? The racially motivated mass lynching in Los Angeles's Chinatown in 1871 revealed the prevalent anti-Chinese sentiment in the city. The subsequent legal proceedings faced numerous challenges in seeking justice for the horrific crimes committed during the massacre. How would the criminal justice system prosecute many murderers and accomplices in a city openly hostile towards Chinese immigrants? The limited response of the criminal justice system included the coroner's inquest, indictments by the grand jury, trials against suspected lynch mob participants, legal actions by the Chinese victims, and the city's attempt to prosecute the Chinese men accused of killing Robert Thompson. Examining surviving court records and newspaper coverage provides insight into the court's intentions. It highlights the anti-Chinese bias that influenced the disappointing legal outcomes. In the mid-19th century, Chinese immigrants in the U.S. faced systemic barriers in the criminal justice system. Chinese testimony was barred by the California Supreme Court, impeding the prosecution of anti-Chinese crimes. Combined with witness reluctance, this resulted in a low conviction rate for crimes against Chinese immigrants, including the 1871 Los Angeles Chinese Massacre. Legal proceedings faced challenges in gathering evidence and identifying culprits. While many rioters were indicted, few faced trial, likely due to limited resources. The few trials that occurred led to manslaughter convictions with lenient sentences, which were later overturned on a legal technicality. The difficulty in proving crimes against Chinese victims based on circumstantial evidence was highlighted. The absence of Chinese testimony and uncooperative witnesses, rather than overt bias, contributed to the lack of justice. Seeking redress, Sam Yuen sued the city, but the trial, Wing Chung Company versus Los Angeles City, showcased the court's bias, absolving the city of responsibility. The California Supreme Court affirmed this decision. Another trial, People vs. Sam Yuen, offered a rare, fair trial, resulting in Yuen's acquittal. These proceedings exposed the justice system's consistent failure to hold perpetrators accountable for crimes against the Chinese community. Biased assumptions undermined justice, denying fair treatment to Chinese defendants. The legal outcomes of the Los Angeles Chinese Massacre reflected the broader disenfranchisement experienced by Chinese immigrants in the 19th century Californian criminal justice system. Conclusion The Los Angeles Chinese Massacre of 1871 was one of the deadliest events of racial violence in American history. It reveals the complex dynamics of racism intertwining economic, moral, and ethnic factors. This horrific event, driven by anti-Chinese sentiment, resulted in the lynching of Chinese men and the destruction of Chinatown. Despite initial hopes for justice, the legal system failed to hold the perpetrators accountable. The incident warns about how crucial historical specificity and a detailed grasp of local realities are when studying race and racism. It underscores the enduring struggle for justice and the consequences of racial prejudice in American society. Thank you for joining us. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay informed as we explore the untold stories of our collective history. Together, let us strive for a society that embraces all its members, irrespective of their race or background.